basically what happened uh, was as normal we were fixing our cages so basically what we used to do is prefabricate a 12 meter long section. The prefabricated cage which spanned 12 meters long and 7 meters high was installed with the crane and once installed it was secured with three number of props. After this the T section was, uh, which was 3 meters long was fixed which we had assumed would be the fixed point which would secure the cage of steel once the props were removed. The shutter then was prepared to be installed. The carpenters removed prop number two and then moved on to remove prop number one. On removing prop number one, the cage became unstable and fell. When I went over, I was shocked and I had to look around and see what to do. We panicked a bit then, we just, we didn't know what to do, we, we, just, we just wanted to leave sight really because we had a bit of a talk of, among ourselves and we just panicked a bit and, and we left sight. It's just the fear of yourself that, that we've done something wrong, we better get out of here, that's the kind of thing it was. What I think has been really important is they actually came back and went through the interview process with us and as soon as it happened we interviewed the crane driver and the, the banksman at the time, and because they were in a different location, sat high on the embankment, they had a different view to what happened. So the management team, we made assumptions as to what actually happened, but it was only through interviewing the, the guys involved with the actual incident, the joiners, that we really fully understood what had happened and got down to the root cause. So it's really important that we've got their views. I think the, the incident here obviously made us take a little step back from um, the way we were looking at things, um, certainly as a design team. Um, and whilst we did the root cause analysis and, and there was kind of no major flaws in what we'd done and the process we'd followed, um, there was little things that individuals could have done throughout the process that we probably missed. We have learned a number of lessons from the incident. It's really made people think and be more aware of what's happening out on site not making assumptions, perhaps it's a task that they do day in, day out, and it's really questioning everything that they do to make sure that we take on board these lessons and we prevent the incident happening again or another incident similar to that. Even though you're doing the same thing every day, it's, it gets repetitive and then you just take it for granted. You should still, every morning, just stop, have a look around and take all the hazards out of what you're going to do in the day, just move them out of the way, whatever needs to be done. It's just repetitive work is, you take it for granted sometimes. And we've learned a lot from this and it won't be happening to me again anyway. <laughs> I suppose what we've, what we've got to learn going forward is that um, every one of the, every, everybody in the project's important and their views are important to the guys out on site who are doing it, um, who probably wouldn't speak to me as a rule at the beginning of a scheme, get as many people of those uh, of, of each different area involved in every decision on site, um, learn what everybody's got to say and how everybody sees the scheme going and how the construction's going to go. So since the incident we've adopted the stand down step back approach, so as part of the weekly health and safety and environmental walk, walk rounds, we talk with the operatives on site to look at what they're doing within their specific work area. but whether it's right or whether they could, they've noticed something that could be improved elsewhere on site. And the feedback we're getting from that is really good. It's encouraging open and honest dialogue with the guys on site, but also management are out there um, engaging with the workforce. The incident that we had here with the cage falling, uh, we have now introduced and we're rolling it out, is a truss system, where the truss is going to be part of the permanent works inside the cage of steel which will remove the requirement for any props to be installed to support the steel or any props to be removed to fit the shutter. At any one point we have roughly 3,000 people working on our sites. So that is people from Yorkshire Water who are by far in the minority. The majority of people work directly for our contract partners and people in the supply chain. The thing that is most important to us, much more than money, is the health and safety and well-being of those 3,000 people. They should come to work, they should feel safe and they should go home safely at the end of the day and then they return back to their friends and family. If we have a culture 
and we have mechanisms where the individual, when he's working on site, that he, he feels as if he's supported by this structure, as opposed to he is the victim of, of the, the non-conformances. To my mind, that positive intervention can come from an awful lot of places. For us, not only are we looking for the, the client and, and the, the client's team to support the individual, we're also looking at his workmate to support him. Just to put a tap on the shoulder, when he's about to step beyond that reasonable line of getting your day's work done, tap him on the shoulder, get him to stand back. Don't, don't make a song and dance about it. Let's not turn it into a negative intervention. We want to be looking for positive intervention. If everybody plays their part in it, we can improve the safety culture and the environment that people have to work in. Here at Barra Hill Reservoir, we're building a new 25 megalitre reservoir and we've got six and a half metre high walls. So we've got inherent risks of reinforcing cages and obviously the shuttering system we're propping. With adopting the trust system that Warden Burke proposed to us, we've eliminated the need for any temporary works on site because it's permanent works and it's formed in the wall. So we're eliminating the props, which frees up valuable space on the floor for prefabricating the wall steel to get lifted up onto the wall, onto the truss. This, in turn, is speeding up the programme, which is reducing my cost, but more importantly, it's making the site a far safer place to work.